Brothers and sisters, Holocaust survivors, second and third generation, families, citizens of Israel. In the past weeks, it seemed that the world came to a halt. Fighting the coronavirus is currently dictating our lives, going from one news program to another, one set of instructions to another. And so, to my regret, we're not gathering tonight as every other year at the Warsaw Ghetto Square at Yad Vashem. However, those present-day threats must not overshadow the memory of the past. We are committed to this memory. We remember. We will continue to remember for our sake and for the sake of future generations. Threats of the present cannot blur the spirit of this holy day, Holocaust Remembrance Day. Even at this difficult time of dealing with the world pandemic, in the midst of the current anxiety, we are attentive and making room for the memory of the past, the victims, and to you, the survivors. You who have survived the darkest time of humanity a holocaust that men did to men. Exactly 75 years have gone by since the gates of hell opened. In the spring of 1945, several months after the furnaces of Auschwitz were turned off, the sun came out over Bergen-Belsen and other camps. For six million of our brothers and sisters, this was too late. When the liberating troops entered these camps, they faced purgatory itself, scattered bodies and people's shadow walking alongside Muslims, the living dead, starved, thirsty, exhausted and ill. Their family members were murdered, burnt, slaughtered or gone. They lost everything. They lost everything, even the ability to cry. Nobel laureate, the Holocaust survivor Eli Wiesel of blessed memory, described it thus. No one cried in the camps, as if you were afraid that if you start, you'll never be able to stop. Freedom for us will be the ability to cry again. This is what Wiesel said. Citizens of Israel, it was the spirit, the human spirit, which triumphed over the Holocaust. The Nazi monster defeated the body, but not the spirit. At the roots of tears, at the depth of hell, in a crumbling world that shows no solidarity, when death awaited every day, our brothers and sisters risked themselves to save those who were weaker than them. There isn't a single Jew who survived this terrible Shoah without the assistance of a hand that was reached by another Jew, another person. Persecuted Jews with nothing for themselves showed courage resourcefulness, humanity, and saved life. They proved over and over again that it is a man helps man world. They proved that even at your lowest point, you can and you should choose to be men. Hold on to the fundamental Jewish value of life, sanctity, of solidarity. They knew that if they will not commit to the basic values of the Jewish people, mutual responsibility and solidarity, their humanity will be lost even before it is killed and annihilated. And so they became angels, angels in the midst of hell. Last January, 
leaders from around the world convened here in Jerusalem to express their mutual commitment to teach the historical facts and lessons of the Holocaust to future generations. We recognize the simple truth that we must stand united, all world leaders and world citizens, fighting racism, anti-Semitism and fascism, protecting democracy and democratic values. This current pandemic, which keeps the entire world busy, fighting a non-human enemy, invisible, one that does not differentiate between people. This reinforces our joint commitment for human solidarity, mutual responsibility, and a non-compromising fight against anti-Semitism and hatred that are also spreading like a contagious disease from person to person. My brothers and sisters, Holocaust survivors, heroes of revival. The life of a memory exceeds its owners. We remember. We promise to remember. We promise to carry the torch of memory with you and for you. We're not parting ways. May the memory of our brothers and sisters be written in the Book of Life.